Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sand and soil brush pack for particle shop. So I have this photograph of an antique bottle that I'm going to enhance using the brush pack. The photo of the bottle is here on its own layer. And then I have a few other layers that I created that I'm going to be demonstrating with. So what I want to do here is I want to fill this bottle with some different layers of soils. First, I'm going to right click on that bottle layer and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to go to filter all the way down to painter and then particle shop. I want to make sure that my color picker here is showing and that it's pinned so it stays active. And then I want to select the sand and soil brush pack. Let's start with the first one here, which is chalky. We'll go ahead and paint a test stroke here. And you can see I get this nice chalky pattern. If I use light pressure, then it's a more faint pattern. If I use firmer pressure, then it's a sharper pattern. I can also make my brush smaller to get smaller textures or larger to get larger textures. So let's say we want to put some of that in this bottle. I'm going to go ahead and paint just right across the bottom here like this. And I'm not worried about painting off of the bottle onto the background. And you'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to go to save and we're going to save only the brush strokes. So those brush strokes will come in on their own separate layer. I'll name that layer chalky. Let's go ahead and reduce the opacity of that layer just a bit so we can see through to the bottle. And then we'll select our polygonal lasso selection tool. And we'll just kind of tap to make a few points to go along here and basically just trim around the edge of the bottle on the inside. And that's the stuff that we're going to want to keep. Everything else we want to throw away. So we'll go ahead and create a layer mask for that layer that trims off the excess. We'll go ahead and bring the opacity back up to 100%. And now we have that layer of soil inside the bottle. Now we can switch to our brush tool. I want to make sure that I'm just using a default hard round brush. I'm going to select white, make sure that this layer mask is selected. And then when I paint in here, I can use a small brush to add a few little lumps so it's not a hard flat edge like this. You can even tap to make some little dots that kind of stick up like that. Down here in the corner, I could also paint in just to kind of fill this in a little bit better. Now there's a couple more things we'll need to do to make the glass look like it's going on top of the soil here, but we'll take a look at how to do that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and just hide the chalky for now. Let's go back to our bottle and let's right click and duplicate it again. And we'll take a look at some of the other brushes available in the sand and soil brush pack. Let's launch particle shop. The next brush is a dirt path and dirt path is kind of a flat horizontal brush that you would use like this to create a path. If you use a bigger brush, you'll get a wider path. And you can also use your pen pressure to control that width. If you press harder, it's going to get wider. If you press lighter, it's going to be thinner. Next is dirt splat. And we can just tap with that to create a splat of dirt. If we make our brush bigger, then the splatter radius gets bigger, as do the particles of dirt. And it looks kind of like some dirt was dropped and then it's splattered outward. You can also kind of build it up like this. Let's go ahead and click on save. Let's save only the brush strokes. I'm going to name that layer dirt splat. Then I'm going to go to edit, transform, perspective. And let's drag this bottom right handle out like this. Let's drag the top one in a bit like that. Let's go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Let's bring this top handle down a bit. Let's click on the check to commit. Let's switch to our eraser with E. Make our brush a little bit bigger and we'll just erase the dirt that's on top of the bottle here. And there we go. We have some dirt that looks like it's going off into perspective. Let's hide that layer. Let's duplicate our bottle again. We'll return to Particle Shop and we'll select Dry Mud. Now you want to do horizontal overlapping strokes here and this creates a nice muddy texture. You can get different types of mud depending on what size of brush you use. If I use a really big brush, I can get this chunky, more dry looking mud. If I use a smaller brush, then I get mud that's a little more lumpy, maybe it looks a little bit more wet. You can also use a very light pen pressure to get dry cracked mud like this. And you can use firmer pressure if you want it to be a bit thicker so you can get a nice range in between. The next brush is a dust storm and we can paint with dust storm and it creates this dirt that's flying through the air. So if you had horses running through dirt or a car driving down a dirt road, this would be a great brush for that. And all you do is just kind of build up little cloudy shapes like this. If you use a really big brush, then you get big broad clouds. And if you use a small brush, then you get very thin ones. 
The next brush is Fine Sand. Fine Sand gives you really nice particles of sand that look three-dimensional. You can put down some of that there. You have it creep up toward the bottle a little bit. If you use a bigger brush, you get bigger particles of sand. If you use a smaller brush, then you get smaller particles of sand. I'll just tap to put a few big ones in here. Let's go ahead and save the brush strokes for this. And we can go to Edit, Transform, Perspective. We'll bring this in like this a bit. And then we'll go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Squash it down just a bit. Click on the check to commit. Switch to the eraser with E and just erase some of that overlapping sand. If we bring back in our dirt splat, the sand go on top of the dirt splat. That's starting to look pretty good. We'll go ahead and just hide those again. We're doing that so we can focus on one element at a time. I'm gonna duplicate the bottle again. Back in Particle Shop, we can choose the next brush and that is Loamy. And we just do overlapping strokes and we can get this nice loamy soil pattern. Let's select the next brush, which is Mud. And Mud is kind of similar to Dirt Path but what you would want to do is kind of build up overlapping strokes on themselves like this, and you get this nice ripply mud pattern like so. And I'm just zigzagging back and forth and just building it up, making little wave patterns and you get something nice like that. The next brush is Pea Gravel. Pea Gravel gives you little individual bits of rock. If you use a smaller brush, then you get smaller, finer rocks. If you use a bigger brush, then you get bigger, broader rocks. And you can use light pressure to make it fainter or heavier pressure to make it thicker. Moving on down, we have PD. We want kind of a dark brown color like this. And we'll just build up overlapping strokes with PD and we get this nice organic soil. Next is pebbles. We'll do a stroke with pebbles. Now, if you press down too hard, it's going to look a little funky. If you press down too light, you're not going to see much of anything at all. So you really want kind of medium pressure here. And then you get all these little pebbles, all this nice little rock textures. As you start to use heavier pressure, they get bigger. If you start to use lighter pressure, then they get smaller and finer. If you're using a mouse, then it doesn't really matter. They're all gonna be one size, but you can make your brush larger and smaller to change the size of the little individual grains. The next brush is red clay. This is very similar to the mud brush. You would build up all this chunky red clay like this using overlapping strokes. You could use a smaller brush if you wanted it to be a little bit more thin and distant, or if you wanted it to be closer, you could use a bigger brush and then it's more lumpy. The next brush is Sand Grain. We want kind of a yellowish color like this. And Sand Grain gives you this nice soft sand with a few gaps in between it. It looks like maybe it was spilled onto the table or the wind blew it around a little bit. You can use a smaller brush if you want little drips of sand, or you can use a bigger brush if you want it to spread out more. The next brush is Sand Wave. Sand Wave is another horizontal brush. So we'll use a bigger brush here and we can kind of do these overlapping zigzag strokes to build up these nice rippling sand textures. You might see something like this on a beach. You can do little rocking strokes like this as well or wavy strokes and just kind of build it up. And last but not least, we have Silty. You get this really fine silt that looks really nice. You can use a smaller brush if you want to cover a smaller area or use a larger brush if you want it to spread out more like so. So I've gone ahead and jumped ahead a little bit and I filled up my bottle with some more layers of dirt. I used the same technique that I showed you earlier to select an area and then fill it with dirt. Now the last step is going to be to put the glass on top of the dirt. So to do that, I've created a separate layer on top of the dirt called bottle color. And all I did was just sample one of these blue colors from the bottle, and then I just painted over just this area here where the dirt is, made sure to not go on the background. If you need help doing that, you could go to the bottle layer and you could use something like select subject. And sometimes that'll do a pretty good job of making a selection that you can trap your paint inside of. This selection isn't perfect, so you would need to refine it a little bit. You can see right here and then down in the bottom right as well, it's a little bit messy, but for the most part, it does the trick. And then I set that bottle color layer to an overlay blend mode. So you can see what it does. It helps tint that dirt and it helps it look like there's glass on top of the dirt or the dirt's inside the bottle. Next, I added another layer. This is called bottle highlight. And I just used some soft airbrushes to go ahead and paint in a little highlight here. There's a little bit reflected on the opposite side as well. The light's coming from the top left in this piece. So that's where the main highlight is. 
but there's also a little bit of reflection on the opposite side as well, reflecting the environment color. And then the last step was to add another layer of aged marks. I used a small dust storm brush for that and just made some little marks on the glass to help it look aged. And that's all it takes to turn a boring photograph into a wonderful work of art like this. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more particle shop tutorials like this, make sure to click that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.